with this we want to talk by professor atul kumar uh, he, uh, you know professor atul has been the uh, chief of uh, rp center and as well as uh, he is a padma shri awardee and bc roy awardee and one of the foremost vitreoretinal surgeon of the country and who has done extensive work especially in the area of macula and uh, that is what he is going to talk to us and now he has set up his own uh, ek institute in uh, delhi where he practices after superannuation uh, dr atul kumar please screen screen share yeah. okay thanks thank you sir uh, for your kind words and uh, this is a master in instruction course uh, by the chairman standing committee number 4 Uh, so i'm going to talk about treatable macular pathologies it'll be a video supported uh, talk uh, this is a place where i work now and i'm extremely fond of using the digital imaging system uh, which gives me a viewing of the retina through a wide screen flat 4k oled screen i use passive polaroid glasses and uh, i don't look through the eyepiece because there's a camera high definition camera over there this camera transmits the image directly onto the oled screen and uh, this has data fusion so the it's actually i have no financial interest but the constellation parameters are displayed on either side i use it for every surgery including oled removals buckling everything so this is the present place where i work in in delhi and this is just to taking a video of the screen is not uh, the video of the surgery through the system recorded but it's just a video through the phone on the screen you seeing a diabetic Uh, very severe fibrovascular proliferation all around the disc so such case we like to do a segmentation so you can see the screen actually magnifies the image very uh, to a great extent so you can go down to very uh, high magnification levels to make sure you don't create any atherogenic issues like breaks or if you see a slight bleeder you might like to cauterize it immediately most important thing is to find the correct pain when this kind of high magnification in diabetics it's very important to find the correct pain mild bleeding it shouldn't bother much but should go and segment segment into small islands this is just a small clip showing you what we do on the we are doing system in macular surgery as well as for uh, any surgery which we do whether it's peripheral retina or macular surgery but uh, this is a paper which has just been accepted uh, by the indian journal of ophthalmology and got the best igo paper award this is my re resident who got the best award and this is a 3d viewing we we got about four or five international publications now besides the igo paper so uh, we just want to tell you I, i just want to tell you that i got a heads up viewing they don't have a bend my neck onto the ip so you see the ip is horizontal but still you got to look through and peer through a small opening in the so analog imaging and it's kind of image the magnification isn't so much so this kind of keeps your head straight in fact your head is elevated good for such a vitreoretinal surgeon especially because so ergonomics the back should be kept straight and your neck is straight straight you feel relaxed and uh, it's kind of easier for long surgery so these are the kind of surgeries that we do i'm very fond of myopics because i see the myopic pandemic the covid's going down gradually good great very good efforts by the country on the covid front vaccines and everybody taking you no know, anti vax anti vax groups so when you see this myopic children day in day out i see children of course we got to tell them to play outdoors like they do in singapore the small children we also tell them to put 0.01% atropine drops but these adults come with lot of uh, sudden distortion in vision which could be a mapic cnv but they also complain get the oct and you'll see this schisis is outer layer inner layer schisis the compound schisis so we've done a lot of work on this interpretive oct as well as also on myopia and uh, this is one of the cases where you'll see that we doing on the ingenuity uh, the we are going system the patient one eye got detached because of the myopia myopic traction maculopathy and due to the macular hole which is so common in the myopic traction maculopathy this is a form of a macular pathology so what i'm talking about macular pathology is one of the myopic macular pathologies so if you got a lasik patient please get his oct also done just don't get his indirect done so now you harbor a myopic traction maculopathy which can get worked worse with the suction you use for when you any kind of those lasik terminologies i don't know much about contour and all that stuff but i can tell you this much this pathology can get worse you might blow a hole when you do a lasik 
So, many of those post classic patients we find as a little traction is increased. So, make sure your macula is healthy. Your readings of the cornea may be okay, but your macula may not be healthy. So, it's a hole has developed here. And uh, so, we did the surgery and it's closed. And this is just to show you a short video clip. Uh, I use the IOCT also with it because the IOCT tells me exactly where the hole is and also to put the flaps on the hole. But so you don't uh, kind of center the hole, the flaps on the hole, then you'll have a problem in not getting a success of surgery. So you can switch on the IOCT with it. So this is a intraoperative IOCT, which is an inbuilt IOCT. So uh, a lot of work done from Cole Eye Institute by uh, the way the people there, it's Rishi Singh and all that. But uh, we've also done a lot of work, I think much more than them, I think. Since 19, uh, 2005, six, uh, 2015, I've been using the uh, genetic device when it first came to India. So, uh, this taking the hyaloid off. So, hyaloid is very densely adherent. Sometimes it takes time. Make sure the hyaloid is off. And the best way to pick up the hyaloid is identify the hyaloid is put some transcendental dusting. And then you stain with brilliant blue G. And then put the, uh, make sure that you've got the flap on the hole. Because uh, there's a hole there, so you could put the ILM flaps. So, you switch on the IOCT, you'll see the hole there. The hole's there, and you put the flap there. And, uh, You'll see gradually, I'll quickly go on, just to tell you where the hole is, and then uh, you'll make sure you do a traumatic surgery. Again, we are viewing through a ingenuity screen, makes it easier for magnification to increase. The minute you feel that you want to catch something else beside the ILM, you better let go and re restart. So make sure you've got the uh, play, the correct plane and surgery done that way. Now, macular holes is another thing which should be done uh, carefully and stage one holes we don't do, but stage two, three, four we do. Stage one and traumatic holes, sometimes you can let them be as they are, but usually the inverted ILM flap technique is still supposed to be the best. There's a lot of talk by uh, the US group about full retinal thickness, entire retina, th pick up the entire retina, cut it, diathermize it. That's very traumatic, I think. So you get myopic holes also, whether you can get holes in any patient aging. And this is a DSM, which is a uh, dome shit macula over there. So this is a surgery of a macular hole, which I did recently at the, my new center. And uh, you'll see the ingenuity screen. Uh, this has the IOCT also with it. So the IOCT and the ingenuity screen combined to give you a very formidable armamentarium with you for you for doing surgery, which has very high success rates. As of yet, since I've shifted, I haven't seen a single failure with my hands. So make sure that I put a little perforocarbon liquid also to stabilize the retina. You'll say why in a settled retina, but I still like to do it. When I pick up the ILM, I'm, I'm sure that my rest of the retina is nicely, a small bubble over there. It's no harm just putting a tiny bubble till the arcade. So this is the kind of a OCT you see through the, this is a perforocarbon liquid over there. The hole you see very clearly. So this interoperative OCT device with the ingenuity screen, on the ingenuity screen, you see the flap is placed very nicely. This is going all around. Make sure you pick up only the ILM and make sure you put the flap on the ILM. The less asthenopia, the epilatal membrane peeling, we can do very good results. So optic disc spits I've done some and uh, at the new center. And I like to put platelet-rich plasma, which I get from a lab. So this is a surgery which is a young girl she was about 17, 18 with very severely affected vision. You can see this kind of a CSR look, but you actually, when you do the OCT, you will see the entire, uh, you know, you can see the multi-layered schesis. The multi-layered schesis is classical of, a, on OCT is classical of a pit. So just quickly going back to the video. So this is how we see, and uh, you should never, never, ever peel the ILM over the hole, over the pit because you blow holes later on post-operatively. So don't peel ILM. So only thing you can do is stuff the ILM from the side without going close to the fovea. Or put plated rich plasma. As you can see the multi-layered schesis visible over there. So what I've done here is I've actually put plated rich plasma on the pit and uh, the, you can do the inner layer uh, schesis and the outer layer schesis. So you can move the IOCT guided uh, IOCT, you know, uh, to see where is it, and while you're viewing the screen on always, so 
So here you can see with the soft tip cannula, I'm trying to put the uh, little bit of platelet rich plasma. Here I've taken off the IOC to make it more clear. You see a small air bubble which got lifted off. You see the solution which gets, gets into the pit. So the patient's done extremely well and you can see the pre-op visual was 4 by 60, 624 and she's still following up. Each time we just get an OCT and this kisses has tended, tended to settle down. There's a lot of work by uh, the Japanese and the, they've said that it takes a lot of many weeks for it to settle down. This kisses has gone down dramatically. Even the outer lamellar hole uh, is also going down. So the patient improves slowly. Let's hope she does keep improving. This is another thing which I uh, love doing and I get wherever, whichever I get cases, a cocktail of recombinant TPA of the concentration of 12.5 micrograms in 0.1 ml. So don't cross 550 micron, micrograms with a bastion and an air bubble. I put a cocktail with a 41 G needle. So these are the kind of cases we get. This is a case recently I got and uh, massive bleed. So I put a twin, a twin injection. So this was possibly a PCV case. So the PCV, a pachycroid, a choroidal vasculopathy is actually a form of, a, or a variant of ARMD, wet ARMD, which is very common in our country. Now PCV tends to develop polyps. These polyps tend to burst and cause very severe hemorrhage. So they, yeah, I'm just finishing in two seconds. So that's, they develop polyps, they bleed. So there's no alternative left except to inject sub, sub macular TPA. So in the next five seconds, you'll see that there's a PVD induction is a must. Before any macular surgery, please make sure you've done the PVD induction for the juniors, uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody knows this. So the IOCT tells me that I'm not entering the sub-RP space. I'm entering the sub-retinal space because wherever is a sub-retinal space, I'll enter there. So with the 41 gauge needle and the cocktail inside the tubercle syringe, you can have a auto injector also, you can do manual injection. So we, I do a manual injection here and uh, you see a huge uh, elevation which has been created. So this patient did extremely well and this was a picture. I have the Claris wide field imaging system. Uh, I, it works very well. So the 10 days post-op, normally you don't need to put a long acting bubble SF6. So these are the kind of massive bleeds you can get. So these are two of the cases I've done recently. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Atul, for showing such uh, excellent videos of various uh, macular pathologies which we can manage with the modern surgery so well. Uh, Short question or later on we can have it then for now. Yeah. One question. Yes, sir. Uh, wonderful videos, wonderful surgery. Thank you. Sir, how difficult it is for you to coordinate between the OCT images and the uh, exact surgery when you are doing it 3D? The hand-eye coordination works well. But there's okay. a, a large learning curve. I was hearing the previous session. There is a learning curve. Yeah. So, but I think I mastered that, so, so I can OCT, do it. So OCT and the surgery. Yeah. Both. That is easy. But okay. more important is to learn to operate while you're looking at the screen. Because we're used to looking at everything which through the eyepiece. That's a big problem. You can create a lot of trauma if you get, don't get used to it. Many people switch back to eye, eyepieces. Okay. So getting a hand-eye coordination or you can say screen eye hand coordination is kind of a uh, little troublesome okay also. and time time how much time does it take more time no lesser time fantastic